brought to uh, financial crisis. And the uh, first half is mostly based on the work with John Boa. And the uh, latter half is based on work with Mark Cutler and Andrea Prestipino. And uh, so let's start. And the uh, question we have, oops, it's the same problem. <laughs> Sorry, I thought I switch on. Yep. Ah, yeah. Work. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Sorry. Uh, the question we have is how does the economy fluctuate uh, with shock to productivity as well as liquidity? And the liquidity is the uh, today's focus. Uh, and uh, so, in order to do that, we try to develop the canonical model of monetary economy. So, the monetary economy I mean is uh, uh, not just. Uh, money is there, but uh, circulation money actually improves the efficiency of allocations. So in this sense, it's essential for smooth running of economy. That's a particular definition of monetary economy. Neil Wallace used that one. And uh, so in that, after we develop such kind of model, we try to understand the role of monetary policy or more general public policy. So this is more like a macro finance issue things. That, uh, so uh, macro finance, we always worry about some public policy implications. Uh, so we will go there at the end. But uh, my co-author is John Moore, so, as you, so he's more theory. And uh, as a theorist, you have to come with a little simple example first uh, before launching in macro model. And, uh, when I go to the macro model directly, John said, I don't understand this stuff. <laughs> so, so I have to start with something and uh, with building together. So typically, uh, we start with a little examples. And uh, so this is the little example we have. And uh, three dates, one, two, three. And, uh, and uh, homogeneous perishable goods at each date. And uh, there are three type of agents, uh, type one, type two, type three, or, or many of them, each type, uh, perhaps equal populations. And then type one consumes date one goods, uh, but can produce the date three goods. And uh, type two consumes date two goods, but produces at date one. And uh, type three consumes date three, uh, but produces state two. And so this is the uh, situation which none of the pair of the agents uh, have a something which wants the other one likes each other. This is sometimes called lack of double coincidence. For example, one and two, uh, two have what one wants, but uh, what type two doesn't want the date three goods. They want the goods at date two. And uh, so the question is, how do you coordinate? Uh, that's the question we, we want to pose. Do you see the one, two, three? <laughs> so, so this is a, uh, the starting point. How do you do? The easiest one is actually gift exchange. Gift exchange is basically you give the gift to the, your neighbor who want it. So, so date one, uh, the one wants the goods. So type two said, I will give you the gift. And date two comes, three said, I can give you the goods. And then date three comes, type one is giving the gift to date three. And uh, so this works beautifully, actually. So, <laughs> so the everybody gives the gift. And uh, this is like a holy land. This is, you can call it the Jesus crisis solution. <laughs> like, uh, uh, you just give the gift, uh, whatever people need it. So, the, and uh, typically, like uh, within the family, and uh, you do these things, right? So, between husband and wife, and uh, as, uh, you said, I want to, uh, can you scratch my back? And the wife said, uh, I. <laughs> You have to pay me fast. <laughs> that's, <laughs> that's the end of the family, right? So, so within the family, you, you usually use the gift exchange. So, 
So unfortunately, if society gets bigger and bigger, it doesn't work that well. So, so then alternative solution is uh, our debris solution, which is the standard microeconomics, which is basically promise exchange. So day zero or day one, auction year, everybody get together and exchange the promise. The type one agent say, I will provide the goods at day three to auctioneer, which auctioneer sell to the uh, type three agents. And then everybody is exchanging the promise to deliver future goods. And the key of the auctioneer is not just to clear the market, but also make sure every promise is kept. So auctioneer has an almighty power. If you don't keep the promise, I will chop your head. So, so that's the auctioneer. Uh, like, uh, so, so this is both gift exchange and our debris works rather well. Okay. The problem is the, if not, not everybody is reliable. Uh, for example, type three agent is not so reliable. They two times they don't give the goods. They don't produce uh, for type two agent. Oh, and also none of them can deliver other people's goods. So think about this goods is like a service. I can teach economics, but I cannot do the haircut. And, uh, so I cannot transfer the haircut to you. So, so, so that's the uh, situation we have. Okay. And, uh, and uh, not only three is hopeless, but also type one, who is semi-reliable, can commit to deliver only to the people who give the goods fast. So, so the type one agent can produce day three, but only produce to the person who provide the goods fast, day one. So this is uh, called bilateral. So if you lend me money, I will repay you, but I'm not going to repay to somebody else. And uh, so if commitment is bilateral, and uh, some of people are not so reliable, this uh, lack of co 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 double coincidence in one's world, the system collapses. So, so the economy gets to the authority. Uh, so, so this is the starting point. Okay, so people are not so trustworthy, or some people are trustworthy, but only bilaterally. And uh, then what do you do? So the, here is the possibility. Suppose the three is still hopeless, but the one can commit to, one's commitment is super strong, a super reliable person who can commit to deliver the uh, service at day three to anyone who bring his paper or her paper, her promise to deliver. So this is, we call it uh, multilateral commitment. It's not just commit to the people who lend the money <laughs> or give the goods before, to anyone. <laughs> so that's the situation we, we are going to take. Uh, please feel free to stop that, otherwise I tend to, yeah. <laughs> It's a limit technology, so basically uh, unreliable. So, so there is no reputations actually. So, so name doesn't matter too much. Uh, the, you can keep changing the name actually. So th this is semi-anonymous, uh, not completely, but uh, uh, so. So yes, that's the question. I will come back to the where the commitment limitation come from. Data. Yeah. So, good question, actually. Yeah. Oh, okay. I <laughs> see. So, so the my my English is relatively limited. So, so when the I left for uh, Japan to come to U.S. for study, and my old advisor Hiro Uzawa told me like, uh, your English is terrible. So, <laughs> if you if you in order to survive, you ask questions, don't answer. <laughs> so, so the, and the other time, like uh, I had a friend who the English is terrible. We have to give a talk in US and, uh, and uh, Itoshi Matsushima. So 
we told them like uh, if you got the tough question you just say that's a very good question <laughs> <laughs> so he gave talk one place and then somebody asked what's the x in that equation and he said that's a very good question <laughs> <laughs> let me come back later so, so <laughs> i know so, so okay so so th this is the situation you see the like uh, uh, three cannot commit, but uh, one's commitment is multilateral. Then what you can do is to date one. So one wants the good. So one is going to issue the paper. So I will uh, give the bearer of this paper date three good. And the three, take two, type two, who can produce the date one good will provide the service. And then the paper goes to type 2 person. But uh, then day 2 comes, type 2 person is going to resell this paper in order to obtain the service from type 3 agent. Here the, you don't need the commitment of 3 because of the, unless you, the 3 provide the service, the, they don't get the type 1 agent's paper. And, uh, so then day three comes, and uh, type three bring the paper to present to the uh, type one, who is super trustworthy, is going to deliver the goods. And uh, here the like a uh, type one's paper is acting like a medium of exchange. And uh, the one's paper is accepted by type two agent, not for because of type two wants the day three goods in order to resell purpose for further exchange purpose. So in this sense, one's paper is inside money. It's a private uh, promise circulating as a medium of exchange. And also, looking at this, type one's paper is providing overnight uh, means of saving. So between day two, one and two, the uh, Two is using it for overnight saving purpose. And then day two and three, three is holding for one period. It travels many times before the maturities. It provides the means of short-term saving, which we call it the liquidity. So liquidity, there are a lot of different definitions. We, assume, we use it as a means of short-term saving, uh, switching hands to. So, so that's the nutshell of the <laughs> solutions. Basically, the, when many people are not so trustworthy, some people are very trustworthy, or some security is multilateral commitment, it helps to lubricate the exchange. So this, this uh, uh, Martin Helwig said, the, summarized this one as a circulation of multilateral commitment partially overcome the problem of shortage of bilateral commitment. If bilateral commitment is full, like ROWs, you don't need the uh, liquidity. Actually, everything can be bilateral with auctioneer. But here, it's not. And also, some people are not trustworthy. Therefore, circulation is helping uh, to lubricate the system. And uh, if circulation stops, then that is the financial crisis. Or the basically the multilateral commitment becomes less multilateral commitment. That's the way we consider the uh, financial crisis. And so you need the situation which you need the sort of uh, commitment is short. Yeah. For this to work, yeah. not only must one be yeah. trustworthy, but it has to be common knowledge. Common knowledge. Yes. The this paper is the. Actually, <laughs> uh, yeah, and uh, authentic, and uh, everybody can see it. Yes. Yeah. So, so this is the little example we start. And actually, the uh, when you write a paper, you do a lot of little example like this first, and then when you get to the full model. <laughs> you erase all the little examples so nobody can see it. <laughs> so so, the, so well, where did that, that guy come from? And the truth is there are a lot of little examples like this before. So, so, the, so most of the action is actually 
doing the little example like this before writing down the model, actually. So, can you hear me? Ah, is it okay? Okay, so let's write it down the business cycle style model. So here the, uh, the limited commitment has a two meaning. One is bilateral, the other is the multilateral. So, so the, uh, essentially the borrower and lender means the exchange of uh, lender is giving the goods today or purchasing power to buy the goods today in exchange of promise to pay in future, claim to the future goods. So it's intertemporal exchange. The problem of intertemporal exchange is the first exchange is today. Second, <laughs> that happens in future. And but when fu future comes, people may not uh, give, the <laughs> may change the promise. So this is a classic like uh, timing consistency problem or limited commitment problem. Of course, the uh, lender knows that. Therefore, you limit the amount of loan so that the borrower has incentive to repay the debt, at least in some contingency. So, so that's the genesis of the borrowing constraint. But the given the borrowing constraint, suppose the original lend the money, and then borrower say, I'm going to repay in future. But the, that due date, before that due date comes, original lender themselves needs the money. So they have uh, some invest, nice investment opportunity or something. And the problem is that this original lender may face the borrowing constraint too. So how do you mitigate the borrowing constraint? They try to sell the, this claim to somebody else. So, but the new lender gets even more nervous <laughs> how to get the money back from original borrowers. And uh, this is the limited resellability, or you can say the uh, liquidity constraint. So, so liquidity constraint become important if and only if only if the <laughs> uh, like a borrowing constraint is tight. If there is no borrowing constraint, original lender doesn't have to <laughs> uh, sell this security. It will just borrow new. So, ah, yeah. It, it is a promise, yes. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's going to be equity now, <laughs> later, yeah. It's a promise, basically. Okay, so let's write it down the macro model. Ah, no, before doing that, this is a picture uh, I borrow from uh, Tobias Adrian and Hyun Shin and uh, so on. Actually, the, this is the uh, US issue of the uh, asset backed uh, securities. Uh, some of them are mortgage backed security. This is the real residential mortgage backed security, this is the commercial mortgage backed securities. And uh, this is the insurance in the last uh, three, uh, three months, or one quarter. So when happen is the middle of the 2007 summer time, the, the secondary market of the mortgage back security starts freezing. Yeah? Yeah? yeah. New lender uh, is the uh, other people, actually not the borrower, not the original lender, some other people. People take turns, like one, two, three. So, so new lender is a p somebody who has a saving opportunity, but don't have an investment opportunity. Yeah? So, 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 yeah. Um, I resell the business because I want to make more today. Uh, no. They, I will come back oh. because, but uh, it's investment opportunity, actually. So original lender have investment opportunity, and therefore you get the funding through the equity, actually. Uh, and then original lender promise to repay in future, but the, uh, ah, no, sorry, the borrower promise to repay the future, but the original lender who was saver today become, have an investment opportunity before the maturity date comes. At that point, the original lender wants to uh, sell the equities uh, because they cannot issue enough equity to finance everything. So you use the, some fraction from 
by selling the old equities. That's where the resellability comes. Okay, so this is something like uh, uh, securitization issues. And the uh, secondary market starts fading uh, summer of 2007. And then once the secondary market starts uh, freezing, nobody wants to buy the primary market too, the new issue one, because of these bloody things. Once you bought it, you cannot sell it so easily. So, so the new issue stopped uh, coming because of the secondary market that's fading. So, so this is the shock to liquidity. And the afternoon, I will come to back where the shock to liquidity come from. But the, in the morning, I will take to this shock, shock to the uh, secondary market as a sh uh, exogenous shock. And uh, so, what you do? So, write down the model, which is the aggregate model output, and the homogeneous capital stock and the fiat money. And, uh, and then everybody is going to uh, get the utility uh, from future consumptions. Uh, we use the log utility because of log utility, you can compute the exact consumption functions. It's like a Cobb Douglas utility functions uh, you can compute. And uh, the all agent can produce. The, you put the capital stock, you get the output, as well as capital stock will depreciate So, at the end of the period. So lambda is a one minus depreciation rate. So everybody can produce. And uh, this return on uh, productions is constant to the individual agent. It's like a constant return to scale technology. But uh, when you have a, uh, everybody try to produce simultaneously, the return starts going down. Alpha is less than one. A is uh, like a productivity shock. And uh, so aggregate output is this guy. So R times big K to, to aggregate capital stock. So it's uh, aggregate wise, alpha is less than one means it's a decreasing return to scale. Uh, and the, re the full model, I have something else, labor, so <laughs> which is the supply is not perfectly elastic. That's why if everybody try to produce more, <laughs> you have to you hire more workers, but the worker supply is not elast completely elastic. Therefore, return go down. So that's where the uh, return on capital starts going down with aggregate. But uh, in today, I just skip the <laughs> labor as if it looked like a social decreasing return, uh, like a Marshall, and uh, individual constant return to scale. Um, is it, it's like a Marshallian externality. Do you, do you see the production function? Yeah? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, this is a homogeneous part, but the next one comes. <laughs> so, so, the, so you need, in order to have a borrowing and lending, you need some, some heterogeneity, as you said. Uh, so the heterogeneity is the capital stock depreciate. Therefore, somebody has to invest, right? So, and, but the not everyone has an investment opportunity. That's the heterogeneity. So pi fraction of individual, IID, have an investment opportunity. If we can convert the goods into capital at the end of the period, uh, one to one. It's a constant return to scale uh, capital production technologies. But not everybody has that. Pi is small number. So, so therefore, one minus pi fraction is a kind of natural savers who doesn't have any investment opportunity. And uh, also, we shut down the investment of uh, insurance against the investment opportunity. Like uh, one possibility is you, you uh, contribute the pot of uh, funds, and then the people who got the investment opportunity get everything. So that's one way to do it. But uh, uh, there is uh, some observationary probably. Uh, so who have a real investment opportunity or not is not immediately observable or other reasons. We just assume the there is no insurance uh, arrangement against investment opportunity. 
So then what do you do? So this is the, so the, the people who have an investment opportunity can issue the equity. It's a fully contingent uh, the securities, which the return, so one unit of equity we normalize claim to the one return from one unit of investment. So one unit of investment, you can convert the goods into capital one to one. So, so you get it at the end of this period. And then next period, they start earning the return, RT plus one, and so on. So this is the claim, uh, contingent claim, which the return is the uh, future return from current investment. And the, the capital starts depreciating, so it's getting smaller and smaller. So this is the uh, unit of equity. And uh, so, the price of this equity, we can call it uh, Q. Uh, have you seen this stuff before? Like, uh, what's the price of this corresponds to the notion? In people will take the micro as well as macro, right? <laughs> have you seen the, the one, this guy's uh, price? In somewhere in the first year graduate, macro ish or? Like yeah, so the, yeah, this claim, suppose the, this is, yeah, uh, not quite, because of the, there is a financial friction. So, so the, the, this is the claim, the price of this claim is like a stock market variation of capital stock, one unit of capital stock. And the investment is one for one. So therefore, the price of this guy is actually the ratio of the stock market variation of capital stock relative to the replacement cost. And uh, you have seen this guy, yeah. Yeah, that's right. So this is the Tobin's Q. So we basically used the uh, Tobin's idea that <laughs> this unit is exactly the same as the return from one unit of investment from today. And then the uh, borrowing constraint is coming from uh, specificity of productions. So like an uh, investing agent invest the goods, get the capital stock, and uh, these people can get the return, full return, RT plus one, and so on. But uh, somebody else try to take over, output doesn't come out so smoothly. Like, uh, Working with John Moa is a bit tricky business, and uh, if I default and you said I will take over, it doesn't work that well. So, <laughs> so the output shrinks by factor theta, and uh, so so as a result, the effectively the the borrower can commit to pay only theta fraction of future return. Therefore, the capital stock uh, against the investment only theta fraction you can invest by issuing equities, new equities. So how do you finance the rest of them? So that's the questions. So, and then the people have all the equities. Can we write down here or should I? Do you have a, uh, I can use the tissue paper, so no, don't, don't worry. <laughs> oh, can you see it actually? Good. So, sorry, uh, I should have written everything into the stuff, but the so the people are going to, uh, some fraction is the uh, investing agent, these guys, and the one minus pi is a saver, probably more people. And, uh, and then in order to, this is a saver, and uh, this is the investing agent. Ah, okay, you have that. <laughs> yeah, thank you. Yeah, 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 that's true. <laughs> Let's use the more. Okay. And uh, can you see it? Oh, 
So, so the, the fund goes from here to here. So investing agent is the one who needs the fund. So, so how do you do? You issue the new equities. Equities. Uh, but new equity only set a fraction of investment you can issue against it. And so, but the, this is the date T. Day T minus one, some are saver, some are investors. And uh, if they are saver, they have some old equity too. You bought it from uh, investing agent. Invest some small fraction may invest twice. But uh, if you have a saver, you, have a, you bought equity before. And therefore, in order to finance, you try to sell the old equity in order to complement the fund raised by the new equity issues. So this is the, but the new equity, you cannot issue 100%, only 5T fractions. And uh, that's the uh, resellability constraint. And uh, this time, I will take this one as exogenous. Uh, deeper question is uh, why the, this resellability changes over time, or what's the limit? We have a companion paper, Inside Money and Liquidity, uh, did these things uh, in a steady state sense. So if you are interested in, please uh, look at our earlier paper. Uh, at the basically, ba based on the adverse direction. Yeah. 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 The way it comes, uh, basically, the each project consists with a lot of lots of parts. And then, then the, before the maturity, you can separate the parts. And some parts succeed, some parts fail. And uh, the uh, producers, as well as original lender, knows which part is failing. And then if that failing part is ra rather big, and the third person, new lender, doesn't see which part is failing, uh, it's not. Uh, so, so that's the, where the uh, limited resellability comes. And uh, but the, so that's the uh, bottom. And then this is macro, so it's a slightly bold. Basically, the, uh, you put the shock to productivity as well as liquidity. Oh. So the most important uh, shock is actually liquidity shock. But <laughs> we take it exogenous here. So sorry, it's a, it's a reduced form approach. Okay. So that's the uh, stuff. Do you see that? OK. So then what happened to the individuals? Individually, like, uh, ah, also we said the money is there too, fiat money. The P is actually the value of money in terms of goods. <laughs> the usually P is the price level, but uh, <laughs> here the money may not circulate, so we use the goods as numeral. So it's like an inverse of pro profit. Uh, price level. And then you have uh, equities of the others who, when you are a saver, you bought it. And also, over the years, you have a probability pie, you have an investment opportunity, you pile up the capital stock. And against the capital stock, you issue the equities, too. So the everybody is actually the doing the lending money, like a <laughs> like uh, buying other people's equity, as well as borrowing money, uh, issuing equity too. So in this sense, this is everybody is in the intermediary. So so intermediary means to you borrow as well as lend, <laughs> and uh, this is the lend as well as borrow. The reason it doesn't net out is the liquidity constraint. You cannot sell every uh, every other people's equity when you need it. Uh -huh. So only fighty fraction, and uh, this one, uh, the, we try to solve it, but uh, we have a very limited computer power, and uh, John and I are uh, kind of completely hopeless actually. And actually, the yeah, the yeah, it, 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 I will. So money, you can sell everything. While equity, you can sell only fighty. That's the reason actually. And uh, so John and I was hopeless. So actually, the, I used to teach at the Minnesota. So first things, 
I, I went to Minnesota did is ask Prescott, should I do calibration? And he said, no. <laughs> you do what you are good at it. That's brilliant, actually. <laughs> so, so the, every time somebody said, you have to calibrate your model, I said, but Prescott said no. So <laughs> that way, I, I survived. To <laughs> So here, the, as a theorist, uh, without using computer, what do you do? Uh, so we get a little shortcut, actually. So the problem is the portfolio choice between money and other people's equity depends upon how much your, you have a capital stock, which is not borrowed yet. The, so, so we make assumption, basically, the. Uh, the capital stock, which you didn't issue equity in the past, you can remortgage. And the moreover, speed of remortgage is 5T. Yeah? So you, so you the, the money is the government, actually, fiat money. Ah, the monetary policy. I will come back. But the, the money supply, you can say money supply is constant. It's a piece of paper, seashell. And uh, it's out there, need not circulate, which case the P is zero. So economy can be non-monetary endogenously. Yeah. So, so the, what's the simplifying assumption? It's basically the, uh, you have uh, equities. Say your investment is IT, say 100. You can issue theta times. 100 unit of equity at the price QT, so issue equity. And uh, you still have a 1 minus theta left, 100 left. So next period, sh equity shrinks by factor lambda. And uh, that one, you can sell phi t plus one fraction next period. And uh, so if you do that, the Equity, oops, sorry. Uh, and yeah. Yeah, that's right, that's right, that's right. So effect, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So the basically, return is all common. It's aggregate. And then the now the liquidity is the same, too, as you pointed out. Basically, the other people's equity, phi t fraction, you can resell. The own capital stock, which is not uh, issued equity, which we call it a mortgage capital stock, and you can remortgage phi t fraction, then they become perfect substitute. And then only things which matter is the net positions. So, so that's the Tobin's Q. <laughs> And uh, this is the quantity of the net position of equity. Then when you look at the budget constraint of individual agents, consumption and the investment, and then issue of equity over the top of the, the capital stock you produce, because of the net position partly you produce it. And, uh, so, and also acquisition of money is financed by return on equity, partly uh, the other people's equity, partly the capital stock minus the promise to the other people. So, so that's the uh, return and also the money. The key is actually this inequality. Basically, if you invest, which you have an opportunity. Theta fraction, you can issue the equity, but you have to retain one minus theta minima. This is like a borrowing constraint. See, the, your equity position cannot be go below that one because of you cannot issue more than theta. And the other one is the resellability constraint. Other people's equity, after uh, depreciation, you still have this one. You can sell phi t, but you have to retain 1 minus phi t. Or unmortgaged capital stock, you can remortgage phi t, but not more than that. So this is the uh, borrowing constraint. 
and the resaleability constraint together. So, so heart of the paper is actually this inequality. Usually, when you look at the paper, one or two key equations. <laughs> uh, the, this equation is the key. So, yeah. Yeah. Mortgage impact is basically you have a capital stock, you issue the equity against it. But uh, some fraction you couldn't issue. But uh, this amount, you can remortgage, say, next period, phi t plus 1. But you have to retain 1 minus phi t plus 1 next period. So that, that way, uh, your unmortgaged capital stock is a perfect substitute with uh, uh, other people's equity. You just look at the one net positions. <laughs> you have to look at it. And, uh, and the borrowing constraint is, uh, uh, liquidity constraint is just become one equation, which is basically the issue invest, you can sell phi t, not theta t, but not more than that. Uh, other people's equity or unmortgaged capital stock, you can resell or remortgage phi t, but not more than that. Not control right, no, no. It's just a limited commitment, actually. So all the return is the same, actually, the RT. So, and then money, you cannot go negative, but you can use everything. So, so this is the perfectly liquid. It's like a, the, you take time to sell the <laughs> equities, basically. And the money, you can use it right away. So, so the question is, uh, so how much investment opportunity you have? If investment opportunity come and go very fast, you have to catch the moment, and you don't have much time to, to finance. You can issue new equity. You can use the tra uh, money fully. But uh, other people's equity takes time to sell. Um, yeah. Hmm. If, uh, yeah, it's a bit like a private equity, I have to say. Usually, like a publicly traded equity, you can sell. But the, uh, the private equity is not that. Yeah, 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 yeah. 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 Yeah, yeah. And then you're slicing out afterwards. We call it onion assumption. You know, the onion is peeling onion. You get the smaller one, and you get the smaller one. So eventually, you can borrow 100%, but it takes time. Yes. Uh, OK. What about the government? Government is just uh, uh, actually acquiring equity positions. and. Uh, and then, how do you finance? Partly return on equity, dividend, plus the senior age, issuing equity. And uh, when this paper, actually, first version was 2001. Uh, so, so when we presented the early 2000, and, uh, people start laughing at us, actually. The like, uh, government don't buy the equity. And, and, uh, but I said, uh, but the Japanese government did that. <laughs> and uh, after the global crisis, actually, the government buy the private security. So, so this is ahead of time. <laughs> 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 oh. And then this is a sort of feedback loop. Uh, so often, the government uh, policy affects through the expectation and asset price. So this is like a, if productivity is higher than normal, A is a steady state level. This is the current level. The, you might uh, buy more equity to finance more, to provide more liquidity. Or if the liquidity of the private security is lower, you might issue more. So this number can be negative, actually. So, so this is the feedback rule. We are going to think about it. OK, so this is the model. Have you got it? <laughs> yeah. Uh, psi is a feedback uh, rule. Rule of the, huh? yeah, yeah, para, uh, a policy parameter. <laughs> so how much, if A is high, so the productivity is high, how, how much the government is going to buy? And uh, if the liquidity is low, how much government is going to buy? So, yeah. So in the previous slide, uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. again about the 
this guy? Yeah. So in the next period, yeah. liability is a move to Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's shrinking. So, and, and, uh, yeah, yeah. It's uh, when you are not to, uh, uh, so you try to reduce this part. Yeah. And, uh, yes. But, uh, yeah? Why, why would I remortgage in the next period if I don't have the uh, investment opportunity? It's the same, actually. So you don't have to. So buying other people's equity or not to remortgage is the same thing. You can, you can do that. So this is constraint is important for investing agents, not for saver, actually. Yeah? Ah, oh. oh, yeah, 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 yeah. That's a good question, <laughs> okay. So, so the, yeah, so basically we don't trust government that much, basically. So government may do, may be able to do a little bit of cyclical policy, but uh, if government starts nationalizing economy completely, that's slightly too much, we thought. So, so we didn't uh, do these things, yes. This is the little tricky questions, yes. Uh, okay, yeah. So what, what is your role of government paper Yeah, yeah, I will come back. So, so the, but the one thing which is easy to do is uh, looking at the deterministic steady state, which uh, productivity and uh, liquidity is constant. And uh, if you have uh, enough liquidity, uh, the economy is fast best become plain vanilla growth model, uh, like a real business cycle model. What's the claim? Which is the, this is a fraction of people who are not investing. Pi is a fraction of people who are investing. So the one minus uh, lambda is the depreciation rate, which is the same as the investment rate in the steady state or saving rate. So basically, this is the saving of the savers uh, relative to the total capital stock. So this is a fund. You want to shift from saver to investors. And uh, how do you finance? Partly the new issue of equity. So one minus lambda is the investment rate and uh, the state of fraction you can issue equity. So, and while the other one is the investing agent, fraction pi, have a equity on average lambda, <laughs> and uh, they can remortgage or reissue, resell equity, phi t. So if you have enough liquidity to shift all the funds to the investing agent, then economy is not constrained. If it's not constrained, Tobin's Q become one, and also money doesn't circulate. And the economy achieves the fast best. So, so without enough liquidity shortage, economy collapse to the RBC model, or solo, uh, or the Cass Goodman's uh, growth model. But if you are uh, the other way around, and they actually the tight enough, so it's not the one, but the beta, actually then economy can become, uh, is fast, if the other way around, the liquidity constraint is binding, but moreover, if it's tight enough, money can circulate. So in that economy, Tobin's Q is bigger than one, and uh, money's value is positive. So this is the monetary economy we call. Yeah. Is there a question? So yeah. Five yeah, that's right. And the way you think of five is the limit how much of my equity I Yeah, that's right. Now, the way you think about something like that graph you showed, yeah. 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 That's right. That's right. So that's good question again. Yeah. 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 So so this is like a bam bang. So as you pointed out, or the little paper also usually like if you try to sell five fractions, the price starts falling like this. Like you try to sell more quickly. Uh, you have to put up with lower price. And uh, the, the way we did it is uh, up to 5T, <laughs> you can sell 100%, but after that, you cannot sell. 
So that's the uh, simplification we, we made, Bamban solutions. And uh, so, so that's, yeah, yes. That's the, our modeling choice. <laughs> so, okay. Do you see the, so then if you have enough liquidity shortage, what is going to happen? That's the questions. And uh, this is slightly scary looking <laughs> equipment system. This is a result, actually. So the most important, so basically equilibrium is characterized by function of the state variable. Maybe uh, the, it's, uh, and then how do you find it? The most important number is uh, this guy. Actually, the million dollar question is uh, how do you value the equity which you cannot sell? <laughs> you see, the, like a financial market, people always ask that question, right? So, so the answer initially we thought is the resale price or the replacement cost. The people who cannot uh, sell means it's, uh, typically they have investment opportunity. So therefore, they can produce one to one. So Tobin skew is bigger than one, but Turns out to be it's not one because of the, the investing agent don't need 100% fund in order to find, invest. So you can sell the state of fraction uh, to outside equity holders. So only money you need is this much. But in order to retain one unit uh, of your stuff, you have to invest as much as one over one minus state because of your selling to the others. So this number is actually less than one. And uh, this is, we call it uh, QR, basically effective replacement cost for the investing agent who can issue equity max theta. <laughs> and, uh, and this is the magic number, actually, the connect to the equilibrium. Okay. So, so then what does it look like? The, I don't give you the. Uh, basically, the, the where completely come from, but uh, I will give you the intuitions. So the top is the good market clearing conditions. Output, aggregate output is either invested or consumed. And the consumption in log utility is actually one minus beta fraction of total wealth. And the total wealth, where it come from, Partly the dividend, partly the money, and uh, the people who are not investing, one minus pi fraction, value equity as a market price Q. And also the investing agent, pi fraction, phi T fraction, you can sell. That's the uh, market price. But the, the stuff which you cannot sell, they value the using the replacement cost. And uh, that's the uh, wealth of the societies. And uh, that's the consumption function. And uh, how about the investment? Investment is a pi fraction of agents. And uh, every time you invest, it costs one. But the state of fraction, you can issue equity at price QT. And therefore, fund you need is this much. This is the, like a down payment uh, you needed. The where the down payment come from, it's a liquid asset. Liquidity is coming from money as well as liquid component of the wealth, phi T fractions. And uh, one minus beta you eat, so still you have a saving. And, uh, and also illiquid part you still consume a little bit. So top is basically the, uh, liquidity. Bottom is the uh, liquidity needs, down payment. And uh, that determines the uh, total aggregate investment. So this investment function is very sensitive to the like a stock price. Basically, the, uh, like, uh, the investment is determined by liquidity. Like, uh, and uh, it's close to the like, uh, credit cycle style model. Basically, asset price plays important law. Both borrowing capacity as well as liquidity you can pro uh, provide to pay the down payment. Now, how, about, how about the savers? Do you, 
you have, are you getting lost or are you all right or are you still? <laughs> do you, do you, so the full detail you have to look at the paper, but uh, I want to give you the some sort of the skin of the game. So, and uh, you see this? So the, this is the investing agents and the consumers. How about the savers? Saver is thinking, should I buy the equity or should I buy the money? The money's return is the value. So one, like an inflation rate, basically, one over inverse of inflation rate. So no matter how you do it, tomorrow you have a not investing, uh, you don't have an investment opportunity with probability one minus pi. The return on equity is actually resale value, uh, standard return on equity, dividend plus resale value of equity divided by today's price. And actually the equity is the value return is higher than money's return here. Because of equity pays the dividend, while money doesn't pay the dividend. But the when saver has an investment opportunity with likelihood pi, the actually money is better than equity <laughs> because of equity you can sell only phi t fraction, not everything. And then what's the return on equity? Dividend, resale part, it's okay. But the, the fraction you cannot resell, you use the uh, effective replacement cost, which is much lower than one. So actually you suffer the capital loss. In terms of picture, this is the return. So the borrowing constraint means uh, physical capital's return is exceeding the return on equity. That's why the investing agent wants to invest as much as possible. So this is the standard wedge coming from borrowing constraint. On top of that, equity's return is higher than money's return because of liquidity is higher. The reason is the equity's return to investing agents next period is lower than money's return because of the fraction you couldn't sell is uh, suffers a capital loss. So, so that's the uh, trade-off. And uh, you have uh, basically uh, the two equations. One is a goods market, the other is assets market, and, uh, and the capital accumulation. Have you seen this kind of uh, stuff? Goods market, asset market, together with general equilibrium. Have you seen these things like a long time ago, I guess, <laughs> before going to graduate school, actually? So this is look like IS, <laughs> goods market, and then this is like a LM, like a asset market. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I, I will come back. <laughs> so, so lumpy investment, but yeah, it will come back. But uh, this stuff look like, a, oh God, like a, oh, we go all the way to get the ISLM curve and uh, what disappointment you might say. <laughs> and, uh, but uh, we derived these things from uh, micro foundation together with the limitation of commitment from scratch. We are not uh, posting this kind of things before. And also, it, uh, so it is actually the modern version of Tobin's Q model, like a 1969 a general equilibrium approach to monetary theory. So basically, Tobin's Q, first volume of J JMCD, basically, the, uh, Tobin's has uh, this kind of model, and the uh, goods market and asset market general equilibrium. And Tobin's Q is uh, basically everywhere. It determines investment as well as it, it determines the consumption. And also, it appears everywhere in the asset market. So, so in this sense, it's a modern version or micro-funded version of Tobin's Q model with forward-looking systems. And uh, so that's what we did, actually. So, and uh, in terms of methodology, it's closer to RBC uh, or rational expectations model. But in terms of philosophy or mechanics, it's similar to Tobin 69. 
Oke, okay. ya. 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 So this one. So so the only things which matter is the borrowing constraint and the resellability constraint or remortgageability constraint. If you take out this one, everything collapses. And uh, so we call it, uh, do you know the Kingston barrel or something like uh, if you, your ship is attacked by enemy and uh, you have to uh, abandon <laughs> the ship, you open up the valve so that the ship will sunk. <laughs> that this is the, the Kingston barrel of our model. Yeah. If you take this one out, ship will sunk. So, so this is the key. Sink or swim with this one. And uh, so the, we derive from that little inequality, and uh, so we get the general equilibrium. Okay. So, how does it uh, look like then? So, this is the shock exercise. So, if you have a this part actually, I didn't do it, then no John. <laughs> actually, I hire graduate students to, to do this kind of things, and we couldn't do it, uh, of course. We just say, here is the result. Can you provide something? And uh, so, so this is uh, like an impulse response people call. Like uh, if the productivity shock hits, say productivity go up by 1.5 of the standard division, what happens? Uh, of course, investment shoots up. It, because of the A is high means return is high. And, uh, but moreover, actually the asset price is high. So, so the, and then value of money is also high. But the, when value of money and the uh, uh, asset price is high, the wealth is high, therefore consumption is going to be high too. So, what you see is that everything moved together. So productivity improvement, investment go up, <laughs> as well as the value, uh, the consumption go up, almost uh, as volatile as uh, investment because of the both are liquidity constraint. And the asset value is going up. Real value of money go up, so is the uh, stock market. Stock market all go up. And then, uh, so then output go up because of TFP shock, proxy shock, and the capital starts accumulating because of investment is strong. So basically, this kind of economy, everything moves together, like uh, asset value, as well as quantities, consumption, investment. And uh, remember the RBC model, like <laughs> stock market, Tobin's Q is one. It doesn't move. <laughs> The value of money is zero, so nothing there. <laughs> so here we have an in intimate interaction between asset value and the quantities. Sargent used to say, like, uh, if you make, the, if you look at the quantity versus quantity, you get something. Rate of return versus rate of return, you get something. But if you try to mixing up asset value and the quantity, you get a mess. So is that true? Like <laughs> <laughs> so, so that's the, but the our case, they move together. So, okay. So what about the uh, liquidity shock? Liquidity shock is uh, this one. We are going to hit the liquidity. So basically, resellability is going down like crazy, like a 70% drop. It's almost freezing the uh, primary market, uh, the secondary market of the primary. Uh, private papers, equities, and of course investment tanks. And then what happened is the, if you look at the pro portfolio equations, when resellability drops, the, you cannot sell next period well. Therefore, equity becomes less liquid and the more likely you suffer because of the resale value is much lower. Effective replacement cost is very low. So what happened is the sort of flight to liquidity. So the basically the return on uh, capital is hi higher than stock market return, but the stock market exceeds the money's return. But uh, when they become 
less liquid, the liquidity premium is going up. Moreover, this curve starts shifting more because of the liquidity become more important. When I show this picture to Tobias Adrian, Tobias said, I have a picture like that. Wow, this is amazing. Like, uh, this is the, uh, like, uh, the uh, repo market spread. So this is the different corporate bond as a uh, collateral, and how much you can borrow, when, how much you need as a haircut, so 100. So like a 3% means 3% uh, haircut, 25 means the junk bond, <laughs> which you need the 25% haircut. And, but the, before the boom, before the crisis, uh, May 2007, the spread is relatively mild. Like, uh, and then when you crisis started, the summer of 2007, some of the uh, private paper becomes completely illiquid. And that's relatively done is shooting up. And uh, not 2%, but uh, like uh, 8% or 10%. And uh, of course, after the Lehman crisis, it shoots up even more. So you do see this kind of uh, fright to liquidity, and, uh, and the liquidity premium shoots up uh, together. So, yeah, 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 yeah. 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 Now, the haircut is an interesting story because the haircut reflects the difference between a magical price that you agree on. Uh huh. Yeah. 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 And how much people we need to lend. Yeah. So, this is not necessary. Is not the price that you pull there and yeah. the hair cut are not the same. Mm -hmm. Yeah, 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 yeah. It could have been just a shock to the, to the stuff quality of the, the yeah. Stuff yeah, 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 stuff yeah, 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 yeah. And then uh, they started Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. Risk or uh, quality, yeah. So I don't deny, yeah. So you obviously you know more than me, but no, uh, but uh, also the but uh, we basically put everything into li liquidity and uh, how much you can get. That's a bit like a theorist way of doing things. <laughs> like uh, if you put everything into uh, like uh, the liquidity yeah, instead, yeah. yeah, instead of the RT, like a uh, rate of return in future. Yeah. Uncertainty <laughs> is a shock to the productivity no, no, as no, well as. Yeah? Oh, ah, no, no, this is a approximate. Yeah. Uh, no, no, this is for the approximate, looking at the steady state property. And then this is a stochastic uh, uh, recursive equilibrium, which has a shock. So there is a two shocks productivity shock and the liquidity shock on top of the two state variable. Yeah, that's the rec recursive system, yes. And uh, so, but uh, when you look at the picture, something wrong. <laughs> so, so the investment drops, yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, I'm just wondering, yeah. uh, this, this is wrong, this uh, yeah. system, yeah. this condition on the parameters that I use for the government for the government. Yeah, 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 yeah. The higher they are and the less I will keep. Right? This one? Uh, no, the government uh, will affect the other things. I will come back oh. to the government. So, so one thing we slightly embarrassed is uh, like a liquidity shock hit. Investment, of course, tanks. But uh, ours is a flexible price economy. Therefore, the like uh, output is kind of determined by supply factor and productivity. So then what happened is the consumption has to shoot up <laughs> and uh, to take over the demand. And then consumption shoots up means asset price has to go up together. So, so yes, there is a flight to liquidity, value of money go up more than 
value of equity. So nominal price of equity is dropping, but the real value of equity shoots up, which is kind of embarrassing. So, so, so then what you do, and uh, John and I said, okay, what about uh, something other than the uh, other liquidity, which we call it the storage. And the closest kind of analogy is net foreign asset. So basically, you can accumulate the dollar. <laughs> and uh, so liquid flight, flight liquidity goes to the, the money, your money, as well as other people's money. And uh, so you can pile up the storage or pile up foreign reserve or foreign uh, exchange. So, so then, then what happened is, the, yes, what happened is the exports go up or import collapse. So, so therefore, investment collapse, but also consumption can drop and uh, net export go up and the net foreign asset shoots up. And uh, therefore, and the more Q can go down a little bit at least. And then, the, so this is the, uh, the beefed up version with uh, the storage. So what the government should do? Do you have any idea? Like you ask the, the government policy. Yeah, 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 yeah. So, so what the government should do? is the, uh, this operations. <laughs> you buy more equity because of it's partially illiquid. It doesn't violate the resellability constraint. Government is the buying uh, fighty fraction part, and then, then they issue the money. Okay. You see that? So, so the government can o do the open market operation, buying equity, pumping in money. So then what happened is the equity is only 5T liquid, while money is 100% liquid. Therefore, you cannot avoid the direct hit. The theta shock hit, the, this is a government policy. Dotted line is without policy. If government, the, at the initial date, actually you have a liquidity shock hit, and the investment tanks. But the next period, port private portfolio has more uh, money rather than equity. The investment come back. And then, therefore, the recession is not as deep as without uh, policy. And uh, that way, you can mitigate the crisis. So, so but the, when you look at the equations, John and I looking at the equation, Wait a minute, this is the flexible price, right? So, so the, if you, instead of the, the helicopter drop, then what happens? Do you have any idea? M is doubled, say. But the M and P is always next to each other. <laughs> See? Then if M is doubled, T becomes half, nothing happens. The, this is a neutral. Uh, the, in terms of a helicopter drop, it's neutral. But the, the reason open market operation is not neutral is you allot the, your private holding of equity and the government changes. <laughs> and uh, removing the heavy stuff, illiquid stuff from private hand to government is the reason it's uh, Stimulate the economy. Hmm? Ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's the question <laughs> you ask, and uh, we don't trust the government that much. So, so we do it in the emergency case. But uh, if government starts doing the banking business, yes, we get slightly nervous, and we don't have uh, that part in the model. So, so there's no meaning to optimal no, no. policy here. No. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I didn't uh, put the enough restriction on government problem. Yeah. Like now, government look like uh, can do something which is private cannot do. Yes. Uh, so I, I won't go all the way to optimum or anything. Uh, just a limited sense. But uh, think about the open market operation, buying equity, providing money, right? So 
But the providing money is neutral means the getting the capital from private to public is the one which does working. So, so John and I say, wow, that means the confiscation of capital works too. <laughs> so if you confiscate the capital from private and then go to the government, then it works actually. So, so then, so yeah. Yeah, 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 <laughs> that's right. You can, yeah, you cannot, yeah, you cannot keep confiscating because of them nobody invest. So, well, so, the, that, yeah, yeah. No, but the money is like a sponge. So yeah. the value go up, so, yeah. in flexible price world. So the, therefore, Open market operation, actually, the, not the money part, but the, this part is working. Uh, so this is, so, so the, not the helicopter drop part, but the, and the, as you said, the, you have to give something in return, and uh, otherwise nobody will invest. But, the, government. yeah? Government. No, government can, don't have investment opportunity, uh, uh, technology, actually. So, so the, in our model, so so what happened is the, this well, is uh, yeah, yeah yeah yeah, <laughs> and also the government uh, here the, it's like a peaceful way of giving the uh, taking out equity with compensations, and uh, that way you can do the my 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 uh, the recessions, and. Uh, what time we, we stop? Like at one o'clock? Ah, okay. So, so this is the uh, the the government policy. The concerning the uh, productivity, this is the waste policy. You can see the it's mitigating. Is that the right one? Yeah. And uh, this is the actually the productivity shock. So productivity shock case. Actually, the, I said the consumption fluctuates as much as uh, the investment, but the investment uh, doesn't move so fast. So actually, against the uh, uh, productivity shock, government should uh, accommodate the liquidity. So, so the actually, by giving more uh, liquidity and removing the heavy stuff, actually, government can stimulate investment more. Like an RBC model, investment should react to the production, <laughs> uh, the productivity more strongly than consumption. And uh, by providing liquidity, government can do that. Basically, the government can uh, accommodate the productivity shock, while against the liquidity shock, you try to offset <laughs> to the effect. And uh, so that's the, what government should do. And I don't want to go too much detail of the, uh, so should I do it or not? I, maybe I, if I have enough, uh, you have enough energy, I will do it, uh, detail of calibration, but uh, I will try to wrap up <laughs> what, you, what we did here. So, so the, before you run out of energies and, uh, okay. So, this is the something it's slightly provocative uh, for the people who do the asset pricing actually. So, so the <laughs> so the what we said is the uh, spread is everywhere. So the return on uh, marginal product of capital should exceed return on equity, but the return on equity should exceed return on liquid money. And uh, so the, and that turns out to be time preference rate is in between equities return, savers return, and investment agents return. So, so this is the normal feature of the economy. And uh, you might say the, uh, during the normal time, the, the spread is relatively small. So you might approximate a little return on assets as an interest rate or real interest rate. But uh, during the crisis, it shoots up. So you cannot uh, approximate one interest rate in the model. So in this sense, normal feature of the economy is the, uh, the asset price, assets return is very different just uh, because of 
uh, liquidity difference. And, uh, and you might say equities return should be dominant of the treasury securities return or money's return. And moreover, when you have a shock to liquidity, asset price jumps all over the place. While the, if you look at the dividend, it's flat. So if you do the variance bound test, dividends present value is almost constant, while the stock price is all over the place. So therefore, excess volatility of stock price or equities return dominating uh, treasury securities return is a normal feature of the economy in which the money circulates is essential. So, so the, in this sense, we said, yeah, it, we have to look at the monetary economy <laughs> or circulation of liquid assets. Yeah. 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 Yeah, 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 yeah. Actually, yeah, yeah, yeah. So the calibration part, uh, which I skipped, uh, do we have five minutes? Okay. So the one we did is actually the looking at a lot of pair of securities, which has uh, identical returns but the different liquidity. Famous one is on and off. Basically, the treasury bond after each long-term treasury bond issues six months, <laughs> every six months or something, and uh, after a new one issued, someone becomes less popular, then the, there is a return gap spread. So typical spread is 0 0.05, five basis point, and then you can calibrate, and then during the crisis, it shoots up. So, so we can do something uh, from that. And uh, so, so in this sense, this is a liquidity as a pricing model. And, uh, and also, uh, the like, uh, open market operation can be used to offset the accommodate the productivity shock and also offsetting the liquidity shock uh, to mimic a little bit more closer to standard RBC. I wouldn't say the full efficiency because of the government. Why don't you do the government do everything? So, so that question come back. So, but the, in order to do this policy, you have to do the, uh, the, you have to buy the partially illiquid assets, private paper, rather than just buying the government bond. So, so that's the closer to the, uh, uh, like uh, unconventional monetary policy. And uh, so we give the rationale for unconventional monetary policy. Actually, I presented the uh, earlier version in New York Fed around 2008, May, May of 2008, before the Lehman. And uh, so New York people, Fed people said, that's what we are doing. And, <laughs> and some people, honest people said, now finally I understand what we are doing. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. The yeah. 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 Usually, you have a quality deteriorations, and then, uh, then become adverse selection problem, but rather serious as a result. Liquidity. So liquidity shock and the productivity. Yeah. Yeah. It's not. Uh, yeah. It's not separated usually. Yes. So. So the. I don't want. Yeah. So, so the, yes, so we should uh, probably stop, I guess. Uh, so, so it, it's good time for going lunch. <laughs>
to see, say hello to John then. And then before Lucas say anything, John's, John asked, did you understand? <laughs> <laughs> and then Lucas' answer is, gee, nobody asked that question for a long time. <laughs> uh, before I asked that question. <laughs> okay, yeah. thank you. Uh, lunch is